Hi everyone and very 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 good evening to all of you. I hope the exam was fine and you are still okay. The few things I'll first talk about before I start the recall session. Number one, the recall is always for guiding you. The recall is always to help you. The recall is always to let you know that this might be the answer because ultimately the recall is based on your recalls. So I have not given the exam. It is my own students who give the exam and they actually tried to recall it for me. Thanks to everyone who has helped me in recalling this entire session of questions. And as expected, INICT has a lot and lot of pathology questions. This year has again proven the same. I'll talk about how the question was according to my uh, view. I'll talk about uh, the questions being a bit uh, other questions being a bit, you know, uh, over or less, uh, how the question was, how the paper was. Before I talk about myself, please let me know, share your thoughts and your uh, comments on how the paper was. Because according to me, the feedback that I have got, the paper was a bit lengthy. New questions were there uh, and the paper was a bit tricky also. The options were quite confusing, especially the four options were not, not very easy to recall at all. Uh, obviously, when uh, I get a question from my students, they become a bit easier for me. It is not as difficult as it is because uh, ultimately they pick up the lines from there and therefore the questions become ap or appear a bit easier there. But I understand the aims or INIC is never easy uh, uh, question to crack through because it tests your patience, it tests your clinical skills and surely, surely the question uh, are always tricky there. The options are very confusing and therefore we'll try to recall the questions again one by one uh, I have a set of around 20 plus questions, which I expect always the uh, more than around 10% plus 15% of the questions actually come from uh, pathology in INICT everywhere and the same is always for the need too. But I'm, one thing that always gives me satisfaction is that the topics I already teach in my class, it has never failed me. And maybe that has never failed me because I take into account what are the important topics that is always asked in the exam and ensure that I never miss those in my regular classes. So for those, uh, so for those who are actually trying to, you know, again move forward as to how to move forward, I'll tell you one thing, the exam was not very difficult. So, but yes, the problem is always there when you try to over attempt the MCQs. Um, so the exam was tricky actually, I would say that the exam was tricky. Uh, the paper was not lengthy compared to the NEET, only thing was there's less repeat, that's very true. And uh, Graduate level pay, electron microscopy findings at various diseases too much. I completely understand. That's very true. Uh, a single EM, EM image of a Golgi body or a, you know, EM image of a, um, you know, that ally image is not very easy to, for anyone to answer. But anyway, the, uh, the you know, the, the topper even doesn't get 100 marks. It doesn't, he doesn't get 100%. He always gets around 70 to 75% and the selection rate is always from 60 to 65%. So it's not about uh, what questions were completely out of syllabus. Let's look at those questions which is actually into the syllabus and which you could have answered. So let's start our discussion. I'll take the questions one by one. If you find any fault in my recall, please let me know and I, we can also try to share this as the time progresses. So my question here, I'll start with the first question. So question number one, the following is a characteristic of Langerhans cell histocytosis. See LCH is actually a cell or tumor of the Langerhans cell which is actually a type of antigen protein cell. It is a type of macrophage present in the tissue whose main function is to take up the antigen and present it to the T cells. Sometimes what happens there occurs a tumor and it is called as LCH. The LCH cells in light microscopy in the light microscopy, the LCH cells are having this type of a coffee bean nuclei. It's coffee bean nuclei. So often they have a coffee bean nuclei. Now this is a light microscopy. We look at the same thing in electron microscopy. It appears as a tennis racket appearance like this. And tennis racket appearance has a lot of granules inside it. There are a lot of granules inside it. These granules are called as Burbeck granules. This whole granule is called as Burbeck granules. A few questions that can also be asked on the same topic is the Burbeck granules, they actually stain for a special stain called as Langerin. 
the lander in is CD207 positive. It is CD207 positive. It is 100 also positive. Okay, the CD207 positive and it's also S100 positive. They also are CD1A positive. They are also CD1A positive. So one thing is, it is answer is burbet granules, and as you understand, it's a tumor of the macrophages, also called as the also called as the antigen presenting cells. Okay, now this is my favorite part. This is my my personal favorite, and I always talk about this in detail when I talk about the liver in my regular classes. Nutmeg liver is this etiology, and you look at this very beautiful image in which you see this red part and the white part, red part and white part. So when you look at this alternating red and white part, it tells you the basic pathophysiology of this is chronic venous condition. See, chronic venous condition is the basic uh, problem here. So what happens in chronic venous condition, it occurs in the left ventricular or right ventricular heart failure. Actually, it mainly occurs in the right ventricular heart failure. Okay. Now what happens is when the right heart fails, see, the liver is not able to put the blood into the right heart. So ultimately, there's a back pressure going to the liver and that causes something called as condition. So if you understand this, see, there is a portal triad here, the central vein here, right? Portal triad and a central vein. So what happens? The sinusoids are flowing here. So because there is a duct artery and a vein here, there's a duct artery and vein, we can surely say the blood is flowing in direction of portal triad to central vein. Blood is flowing from the portal triad to central vein. So because this typical flow from portal triad to central vein, what happens? This area is now completely blocked. This outflow is blocked. So because the outflow is blocked, what happens? The sinusoids at this area, the sinusoids, they all get dilated like this. Sinusoids, they all get dilated and they're filled up. They're filled up with this blood like this. The whole sinusoid gets filled up by the blood like this. And because there is no oxygen reaching this area, this part of the hepatocytes, they all get necrosed. These all hepatocytes, they all get necrosed like this. The hepatocytes, they all get necrosed like this. Ultimately, what happens? All the area around the zone 3, this is zone 3, right? So all the area around zone 3, they start appearing red in color. And this area, because of more and more fibrosis, they start appearing this zone 1, they start appearing white because of fibrosis. So what happens in nutmeg liver is there is a necrosis in the hepatocytes and sinusoid dilatation in around the zone 3, that is centrilobular necrosis with sinusoidal dilatation. This appears red. And the periportal fibrosis is seen. Periportal fibrosis is seen. And this is what you call as a nutmeg liver. This is what is called as a nutmeg liver. So I'm very sure you might have answered this correctly. So this question is a repeat question. I'll not say it's a new question at all. This actually is a repeat question. It actually had come once in AIMS also. This nutmeg liver uh, actually is due to uh, red color and necrosis around zone 3 and fibrosis around zone 1. Okay, fibrosis around the zone 1. Okay, clear cell carcinoma is seen in. So what have you marked here? Please tell me. Clear cell carcinoma. You remember the clear cell carcinoma of the ovary? So clear cell carcinoma of the ovary. So where do you put it? In which category of the tumor do you put the clear cell carcinoma of the ovary? Please let me know in your regular chat. Batao, batao. Fast, fast. What have you marked here? Remember the ovarian tumor classification. We look at the ovarian tumor classification. There's an ovarian tumor classification. There is this follicles, the developing and ultimately the follicle, they actually release the oocyte outside. They release the oocyte outside. Okay. So when they release the oocyte outside, the tumor classification is done according to the tumor cell of the, the epithelium. There is germ cell. There is germ cell. This tumor cell of the epithelial, there is germ cell tumor. So the tumor classification can be epithelial tumors. There can be the germ cell tumors. This is a germ cell tumor. Okay. Germ cell tumor and the sex cord tumor. The cells which actually support them, they're called as sex cord tumors. Okay. They're called as sex cord tumors. So very easy to understand. The epithelial tumor are serous, mucinous, serous, mucinous. It can be the other tumor like Brenner's, Brenner's, clear cell and can be endometrioid, endometrioid. Okay. These are all our epi Thelial tumors. If you talk about the tumors which belong to the germ cell, so when you move to the germ cell tumor, I'll just make it a bit smaller. Okay, when you talk about the germ cell tumor, it's very simple to remember. Remember in the ovary, you remember have to remember the Delhi city, C E T Y. Delhi city means dysderminoma, dysgerminoma, choriocarcinoma, embroinal. 
एम्ब्रॉनल कासिनोमा टेरा टोमा एंड द योग सैक ट्यूमर दिस बिकम द जर्म सेल ट्यूमर एंड द सम ट्यूमर्स विच एक्चुअली द सम ट्यूमर एक्चुअली दे आर ऑफ द सेक्स कॉर्ड सो द सेक्स कॉर्ड ट्यूमर्स द सेक्स Cord tumors, those are those cells which support them. So always try to remember this. This can be repeat question also into those cells which release estrogen and those which release androgens. ठीक है? Now those uh, cells which release estrogens, they all are granulosa cell tumor and theca cell tumor. Granulosa and theca. And those which release the androgen, they actually are the Sertoli and Leydig. Sertoli and Leydig. This whole you must remember, and there are some tumors which do not release either androgen or estrogen. They are called as hormone silent tumor. They are called as fibroma. So obviously the answer to this question is epithelial tumors. Epithelial tumors. ठीक है? Epithelial tumors. So netmeg वाले का answer क्या होगा? देखो netmeg वाले का answer होगा the white area are whiter. So this has white area is the viable, not whiter, viable area, and the red area is necrosed area. ठीक है? White area is viable and the red area is necrosed area. Okay? Acha. Splenomegaly is not a feature of. Again, I should not say this was a tough question. It was a pretty easy question. Splenomegaly is surely seen in hairy cell leukemia if it this shows a massive splenomegaly. Okay? Lymphoma can show you splenomegaly. CML can show you massive splenomegaly. But aplastic anemia will never show you splenom or hepatomegaly. See, aplastic anemia is a complete bone marrow failure. It is not only bone marrow failure, it is actually a failure of complete hematopoiesis. It's a hematopoiesis failure. So this failure occurs both in the bone marrow as well as in the spleen. And therefore, you will never find splenomegaly in the aplastic anemia. You will never find splenomegaly in the aplastic anemia. Okay? So let's be honest to ourselves before we move forward. See, the question was tricky. I'm not saying the question was easy at all. It was in the pressure cooker scenario. You often tend to make some mistakes, okay? But some things you must remember. And those are frequently asked questions. I've shared you many a times those frequently asked questions. And if you look at this uh, aims also, they tried to put up those questions which are frequently asked. So again, I, I tell you the same thing. If you are preparing for the NEET exam, don't worry at all. The questions will be from the same topic again and again. Just try to prepare the topics in a better possible way. Okay. Now, before we move forward, can we have a small uh, like to the video? I have tried to also, you know, recollect this question a lot from my students. So, if it is okay for you, please do like the video before we move ahead. <clears throat> okay. Which anemia can we see, Splenomegaly? Better if any type of any type of hemolytic anemia, especially the extra vascular hemolysis, can show you Splenomegaly. So diagnostic microscopy finding of LCH is also the Burbeck granules. Don't worry about it. It can't be anything else. Guys, can we like the video? Okay, the patient with testosterone mass and ataxia. Now this was a bit tricky question. I want more, uh, you know, history from you before I ask this question. What was the other history given this question? I'll come back to this question again. Let's move forward right now and discuss the other question. We'll come back to that question again. So, uh, a patient with CLN Definitive diagnosis is made by. So, if a patient has CLL, what do you see? In a patient of CLL, you see there is lymphocytes. So, question was also, some of the students are also saying there was some lymphocytes, a lot of lymphocytes were there. A few of them were smut cells. There's also in the options, some of them are saying that some of the smut cells. So, if you are suggesting there's lymphocytosis and you are saying there is smut cells and you are thinking about its case of CLL, well, the first thing you should do is you should go for a flow cytometry. This is the first thing you should go for. The flow cytometry, remember, because they're mature B cells, they're mature B cells. Okay? They're mature B cells. What happens in mature B cells is they are, say, 19 positive, they're 20 positive. This shows they're B cells. Because they're mature B cells, the TDT is negative, 34 is negative, which proves, which proves that there surely is the uh, not a blast. So this tells you it is not a blast. This tells you it's a B cell. Now after this, look at the CD5 positivity. Now if there's CD5 positive, it can be two of them. It can be mantle zone lymphoma or can be CLL. The moment you answer it CLL, it must be 23 positive. And mantle zone lymphoma is CD5 positive, but 23 should be negative here. Remember, mantle zone lymphoma is 23 negative. So right answer this question will be flow cytometry. It can be anything. See the next step or definitive test. Please understand whether it is next test or it is definitive test. The answer surely will be 
close automatically also wherever this question has been repeat question in aims you might have you should have seen this the answer to that question was immunophenotyping the same thing is called as flow cytometry why not bone marrow biopsy see bone marrow biopsy has a very limited role very limited role the option d probably was bone marrow biopsy so bone marrow biopsy has a very limited role in cll diagnosis Cytogenics was one more option, okay. Cytogenics was one more option, but again, cytogenics will not prove you it is CLL. But yes, cytogenics, if it is done, it will show you 13Q deletion. It can also show translocation of 11 with 14, but surely the answer should be the flow cytometry, okay, flow cytometry. Now, if even if the next step is diagnosis, see, if the question was next step, and how they are getting to CLL, how are you getting to CLL? You are getting it by the CBC. So you have to prove CLL by doing a flow cytometry. Okay. A child with chloroma. Yes, here that question was next step in evaluation. So we have seen chloroma and what is chloroma? A chloroma is nothing but a extra medullary, extra medullary blast proliferation. It's a extra medullary, extra medullary blast proliferation okay ab dekho uh, bone marrow biopsy and cytogenic was three and four option not purple smear okay so purple smear was not in the option so does not worry about it the options were so thank you for it if you have any other things please let me know it is c and this one was d okay Achha. Now, if a patient has chloroma, it is extra medullary blast proliferation and these often present as a swelling either in proptosis or they can present as a, uh, any soft tissue to a swelling in that in the body. So, I will tell you a real-time scenario. What happened once was, there was a patient, he was 20-year-old boy, uh, actually um, a young adult and he presented with a swelling in the back. Now, it was a very small swelling here. It is a real-time scenario. It had just happened two, two months back and I used to tell this story every time I have taken a class since then. What did the surgeon do? He just excised this tumor thinking it's a lipoma. He did not, he did not go for FNIC, did not go for biopsy. When I reported the biopsy, he came rushing to my lab. He came rushing and told me, what are you doing? You are reporting a case of lipoma to be a blast. I said, sir, it is blast. You know what he said? Oh my God, I've done a big mistake. Now, that is what happens when a surgeon sees the swelling, he should go for FNAC or biopsy before he takes out a tumor. It should be an evidence-based medicine. So, what happened, the patient actually had blast. It was actually a case of AML showing you a, a case of the uh, a case of the AML with extra medullary blast proliferation. So, go for preferred smear examination. It can show you blasts. If the blasts are seen, then go with the bone marrow aspiration. Then go with bone marrow aspiration. Okay. So, the purple sphere was not in the option if you say. Uh, what was the other question? So, the question was A, platelet, B, white blood cell, C, hemoglobin, and D, please let me what is D. Then you should go for the WC count here. And WC should be looked into detail as to prove whether it's a case of AML or not. So, leukocyte count was there? Yes. Then go for leukocyte count then. It was leukocyte count. Then it should be a leukocyte count. So, what are the common sites for uh, chloromas? Chloroma often occurs beyond, below the ears. Often it is presenting as a proptosis. But chloroma can present anywhere in the body. Okay. It can present as anywhere in the body. We are trying to discuss this question also. Let it be a, like a test and discussion. <laughs> yes, the test was the INICT and we are now trying to discuss it. So, please be open with your thoughts. Just don't hold it up. I am just looking at 300 plus uh, students who are live with me now and I am just looking at few of the doubts that you have. Please fill up the chat box with maximum doubts that you have. If you have made a mistake, don't worry. We will just ensure you don't do the mistake same next time. Please fill up, fill this live chat with your doubts. Okay, so option D was peripheral smear. Then I will go with peripheral smear. If your option D was a peripheral smear, then I will go with the peripheral smear. <laughs> that is how the answer changes with your options. That is how it goes the answer with the options. Okay? 
So if the PBS was in the option, then the answer surely will be a peripheral smear. Surely, no doubt about it, guys. No doubt about it. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, my favorite, my personal favorite. And I used to call this chic kebab appearance. I used to call this always in my classes. I tell you, ye dekho agya, khane ki bari. it's a chic kebab appearance. I always talked about this in the class. A patient with a clinical features of asbestosis and image of perennial body was given. So they have called it perennial body. I don't know whether this was in the answer or not. It was just what is given to me uh, by my students. So yes, it is surely a case of asbestosis they actually have this asbestos particle and around the asbestos particle you see this type of beaded appearance you see this type of beaded appearance this beaded appearance is like this okay this beaded appearance like this and these are asbestos with iron and glyco protein rim iron plus glyco protein rim Okay, iron plus glycoprotein rim, and this is called as asbestos body. And I call this a chic kebab appearance. If the same thing has any other, any other organic mass, any other organic mass with the iron and glycoprotein, it becomes what is called as a ferruginous body. Remember, both of them are seen in asbestosis. Look at this typical apparent, the same image you'll find in my own notes. And this is the same image I've shared with you multiple times on my Telegram group. Exactly same image. Not a single thing has changed. That is what is called as a asbestos body. Yes, I can surely tell you what happens in silicosis in the equipment. I just want you to tell this only. Please ask me your doubts. Please ask me your doubts. So yes, there's my history of cough. Very good. History kata Cough. Very good and dyspnea thank you cough dyspnea there was and plural thickening there was plural thickening okay there's plural thickening what happens is silicosis very good silicosis will show you silicotic nodule it's a collagen nodule it's a silicotic collagen nodule okay and if it would have been a coal worker if this would have been a coal worker then coal worker pneumoconiosis would have shown you a coal macule which is a macrophage with a coal particle or a coal nodule which is a macule with a collagen rim around it this would have been a finding in the in the coal worker or the silicosis so there was a 10 year history yes thank you there's a 10 year history of exposure thanks a lot okay thanks a lot other option was coal industry and one option was cotton so I guess put it cotton also. One option might be a cotton here. Chalo. A patient with dyspnea on exertion for one month, image of Akshav nodule is given. So I think this was a not a rightly uh, recalled question, but yes, there's a question on Akshav bodies. The patient has uh, probably mitral stenosis. There was also mitral regurgitation previously. And the patient now has a chest pain, dyspnea. There was a history there and was given this type of appearance. This is the myocyte. These all are myocytes and what you're seeing at the center, this actually is what is called as ash of bodies. It was called an ash of bodies. Yes, it's an ash of body and it's seen in the rheumatic heart disease. A fungal granuloma will show you surely a feature of granuloma with a giant cell. <coughs> giant cell. Thakadose will show you non-caseting granuloma. TB can show you granuloma or can show you a non-caseting granuloma or a caseting granuloma also. So MS and history, I told you this MS or MR history was given. Surely there's a history given there of a MS and MR and often this is seen by a group A beta hemolytic. It's seen in the group A beta hemolytic streptococci. The strains can be asked. It can be 1, 3, 5 and 18. 1, 3, 5 or 18. Okay. So there was a MS history. Thank you. There was a MS history. Myotrasmus history. And the wall was rejected. The wall rejected. And the biopsy is given below. And the biopsy was given below. So it was a 32 year old male patient. Thanks a lot for your recalls. Really indebted to you. 30 year old male with a mitral wall, mitral stenosis. The wall was rejected and the biopsy is shown here. What you should see is an Asha body. An Asha body actually has a macrophage. And often the macrophage takes the shape of an anishko cell, which is actually a caterpillar like appearance. Those actually are a modified macrophage seen in Asha body. 
as your body may have necrosis also at the center, it is called as fibrinoid necrosis. It's a finding seen in uh, acute rheumatic colitis. When the same thing goes to chronic rheumatic colitis, the wall become fibrous and calcified. There is a small vegetation on the ends of closure and it's what is called as a fish mouth appearance, as a fish mouth appearance, okay? Okay, there was a question. I, I, I'm not able to find the other options. Please help me to recall this. A patient with low grade fever and cough, okay? The case necrosis was seen on the chest x-ray. What is the mechanism? So there's a case necrosis, you can understand this is a tuberculosis. Surely the answer would be epithroid cells and a giant cells. So could you please tell me what are the other options there? Uh, sir, can sarcoid have mitral wall involvement? Surely. Sarcoid can surely have mitral wall involvement, but will not show you the actual bodies. But smart say yes, sarcoid can have the heart involvement also, surely. Okay, so this was seen on the tip of lung, okay? On the tip of lung, that is apex of lung. Can you tell me the other options here? What was the other option? What were the other options? So, granuloma was one other option? I don't think so. Can't be granuloma, right? Achha, enzymatic degradation. Thank you. Enzymatic degradation. Thank you. Fibrinoid necrosis. Okay. Fibrinoid necrosis was one of the options. And macrophage was also in this option. Okay. Macrophage was also in the option. Enzymatic degeneration was in. Hypersmeraction was in. Okay, you have maximum question from your pathology, surely. And it should be because you have been learning a lot from me. So, yes, it should be correct. Sudden cut of blood supply. Okay. Sudden cut off the blood supply. Okay. Thank you. Now, I am liking this video. I am myself liking this video. Please, because of your perfect recall you are doing for me, please like a video for yourself. Yes, surely. Thanks a lot, dear. Okay, there was a hyper sensitivity neutrophils also. So, I am not sure what option was not there. Hyper sensitivity with neutrophils was one of the options. Okay. Type 4 hypersensitivity was the first option. Okay. This was actually a type 4 hypersensitivity action. Thank you. And along with that, there was epithroid cell, giant cell, and macrophage, which surely becomes the answer here. So, guys, please like the video for yourself. We are really doing a great job. And thank you for looking this. And you can actually try to recall all the questions. So, constituent of an ASHA body is multinucleated. Yes, ASHA body consists of an anishka cell. And this anishka cell is actually a giant cell in which the nucleus is arranged like a caterpillar. They're arranged like a caterpillar. Pillar, it is called as anishka cells. Apart from that, they have lymphocytes, plasma cells, and surely have at the center they have fibrinoid necrosis. Okay, I hope I think we have discussed this question already. This was a again a sorry. If we have discussed this question, it should be aplastic anemia. So I'm sorry for this. Uh, again, okay, which mutation is the arrow mark pointing to? Okay, so the question was something like this. The question was on a chromosome 11. Some people say chromosome 11 was shown, and there was a chromosome here like this. And the arrow was marking here like this. The arrow was marking here. And the question was, which mutation is this arrow pointing towards? Which mutation was this arrow pointing towards? Ah, Ashwini said, liking my new specs. Good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, this new specs is actually, um, you know, I have been seeing you a lot. And I like this new specs. Thank you, sir. Ashwini, sir, aaj hai. One cheers for Ashwini, sir. Chromosome 13. Chromosome 13. Okay. So chromosome 13 was there and the arrow was marking in the arrow was marking in the central area. Okay. It was marking the central area. So uh, probably the answer would be in this case the answer should be a metacentric chromosome. A metacentric chromosomes. Okay. It should be a metacentric chromosomes. Right. Chromosome 13 peta. Haji TK. Um what is 13, 14, 15? The question was not that. The question was, if the arrow is marking here, so what type of mutation it, it would be? It would be metacentric mutation. It's metacentric mutation. Okay. Chromosome 14 was absent also. Uh, so sir, there was a telocentric chromosome beside it. I think it was the abnormality. <laughs> so, <laughs> a lot of confusion going on. In fact, the person who actually recalled, the students who recalled for me, I asked every one of them, Ki, what was the question asking you? And they were like, we don't know. We don't know what the exact question was. So, 
Yes, a lot of history was given. Exactly. A lot of history was given. Arrow was little uh, below the center of the chromosome. Now I get up, got one more thing. Okay. So some people saying it was here. So anyhow, it is metacentric. It becomes sub metacentric. It becomes acrocentric. And this becomes a telocentric. Now I'm not sure where the exact arrow was because students are not able to exactly recall it. But I think the arrow was here as I've been recalled by most of my students there. The answer should be a metacentric chromosomes. Finding out the chromosome MNOT, it must be a metacentric chromosomal MNOT. The question was uh, about the histopathology and the mark cell and the cancer was asked. So exact image I, I couldn't get, but yes, the question was on Hodgkin's lymphoma and was showing you that is, is not completely, it was Hodgkin's with RS cells. The option was Hodgkin's with the Reed Sternberg cell. The exact question I don't have. I'll just put you that question in the group as soon as I find it there. Um, so there was no chromosome image with arrow, telocentric and metacentric chromosome at 13 with arrow pointing towards metacentric and single telocentric chromosome at 14. Okay, let me just read it again. Chromosome 14 had only one that is pair absent and 13 it was additionally attached like you mark now. Okay, this question was, question was, what was the virus associated? The virus associated, yes, the virus associated is surely and surely Epstein-Barr virus. It surely was Epstein-Barr virus. So two questions on the topic. One question was on Richard Maxell and one question was on the Epstein-Barr virus. Okay, that's it. Thank you. So one question was on the RSL image. One question was on the RSL image. That's true. And the second question was on the Epstein-Barr virus causing the Hodgkin's here. Haji, 30 new positive RI, but what RI? It's coming to go. Sir, what, what type of chromosome is Y chromosome? Y chromosome should be, you see, humans don't have telocentric chromosome, chromosome. So it should be a telocentric chromosomes. Okay. Fish is done in which her to new? Look, what happens when you stain something with uh, the her to new? Suppose you look at this microscopy. In this microscopy, you are getting. In the microscopy, in the microscopy, you're looking for this her to new like this. Okay. Now what happens if you get most of the cell as her to new positive, it becomes three plus. Okay. Now the strong positive is three plus and weak positive is one plus. Okay. I'm talking about the her to new IHC staining. Okay. IHC staining. Strong is 3 plus, weak is 1 plus. Now what we do is, we take this one as surely positive, but we take this one as negative. Now what comes between them is that 2 plus, this between that 2 plus, this between that 2 plus, this is what is actually taken and is amplified by PCR. It is amplified, amplified by the polymerase chain reaction. Amplified by the polymerase chain reaction. Okay. And therefore the answer must be, Fish is done in which of the following hertinue. So fish after IHC should be done for the hertinue 2 plus. It should be done for hertinue 2 plus. It's, it's a surely is a direct repeat. It surely is a direct repeat because it shows not a very strongly positive. We have to amplify this with a PCR or a fish test. Okay. Okay. In Starry's sky appearance, the gene responsible is. So this is an image of Starry's sky appearance in which you're seeing these are the macrophages. These all are the macrophages here. Okay. And these all are the tumor cells. It is called as a Burkitt lymphoma starry sky appearance. Remember, what happens in Burkitt is, what happens in Burkitt lymphoma is, from B number C, and the gene responsible is CMIC. From B number, chromosome number 8, because B, this B, it looks like number 8. So CMIC is on chromosome number 8. The translocation is actually 8 with 14. And it can also be 2 with 8. It can also be 8 with 22. It can also be 8 with 22. Okay. It can also be 8 with 22. Okay. Image was not given. Chirahatadiya image. And the answer should be C mic positivity. Okay. C mic positivity. Okay. C mic positivity. 
आई हैव गॉट वन मोर थिंग सर हॉचकिस आर एस एल ईबीवी हॉचकिस आर एस एल एच आई वी ओके थैंक यू गाइस आई जस्ट मार्क इट डाउन द क्वेश्चन हियर वॉज आई जस्ट मार्क इट डाउन थैंक यू गाइस हॉचकिस आर एस ईबीवी तो दिस बिकम्स द आंसर ऑब्वियसली सेकेंड ऑप्शन वॉज हॉचकिस आर एस एच आई वी थर्ड ऑप्शन वॉज नॉन हॉचकिस थैंक यू नॉन हॉचकिस जैंट सेल ओके वॉज नॉट द आंसर सो फोर्थ वॉज नॉन हॉचकिस आर एस एंड एपस्टीन बार वायरस ओके थैंक यू इफ इज द राइट आंसर द पेशेंट हैज अ पैरा एओटिक लिंप नोट हियर पैरा एओटिक लिंप नोट हियर ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ पेशेंट हैज अ बी स्ट्रिंग एंड हैज एनाफेलेक्सिस लाइक रिएक्शन the following antibody is reaction is involved and what is the and what is the mechanism okay so right answer is it should be ig involvement it's actual type of type 1 hyper sensitivity reaction is type 1 hyper sensitivity reactions <clears throat> why not non hodgkin hiv so can you please recall the exact question i can tell you why not that i can tell about the bcr abl so bcr abl actually is seen in chronic myeloid leukemia only in history is mentioned such co appearance it surely becomes a case of it surely becomes a case of uh, the semic positivity okay least radio sensitive phases see it is g1 which goes at checkpoint goes to s then goes to g2 then again checkpoint goes to s so sorry goes to m now among these phases among these phases the most radio sensitive is the g2m phase it's most radio sensitive phase okay and the least one is s it's the radio resistant phase radio resistant phase so it must be the s phase which is more and more radio resistant it must be the s phase which is more and more radio resistant ig was also the option let's call this iga here so this becomes actually the s phase is the least radio sensitive phase is actually the radio resistant phase okay now incorrect regarding frozen section so i have got three options which actually all of them look correct and obviously the fourth option must be wrong so if you uh, remember this please let me know what was the answer so what is frozen section imagine a patient is on the ot is on the ot table and the surgeon is operating on him he wants to ensure whether this tumor is there completely removed or not so what you can do two things you can either wait for the biopsy report to come after 7 days or during the intra operative procedure you can take that specimen and send to the pathology lab we put the specimen at minus 70 liquid nitrogen at this temperature that in that tissue gets hard or firm we can take a section fine section of it and we can stain it and let you know whether it is tumor or not and the biggest advantage of going for a met diagnosis or we can look for the tumor pre margin a tumor pre margin Hodgkin lymphoma EB is the answer, not HIV. Because HIV is not the main cause of Hodgkin lymphoma. It should be Epstein Barr virus only. There is no doubt about it. Okay. Immediately come to conclusive diagnosis at all times was the fourth option. Option should be done in all cancer every time. Okay. Fourth option was it was done in fourth option was done in all cancers every time. Was this that the case? Can be used in all the cases. surely it can't be true because see a frozen section it cannot be done for every tumor and some tumor are removed completely and block so you don't need to do that there immediate diagnosis in all cancer diagnosis in all cases so done for definite diagnosis okay so if the question was if the question was done for definitive diagnosis this is the answer you cannot use you cannot use frozen section for definite diagnosis you can only look for tumor sir the morphology in frozen section is not very clear so we often don't take this as a definitive diagnosis okay we cannot take this as a definite diagnosis so it is that the answer should be it is done for it is done for definite diagnosis it should be the answer because you cannot use frozen section for definitive diagnosis okay there was a question on actually trolley some friends call was calling this taco so the finding of trolley see a trolley is actually what antigen plus antibody they combine and which antigen it is a hla antigen combining with the hla antibody often in the plasma often when you give the fresh blood plasma and they deposit in the alveoli okay they deposit in the alveoli so when they put they deposit in the alveoli like this 
okay so what happens these immune complexes they activate the complements and that causes a ARDS like finding they, they cause a finding like ARDS it is called as transfusion related acute lung injury so now see some students saying you that it was actually not trolley it was not trolley it was taco so if you say taco what is taco taco stands for the taco stands for transfusion associated circulatory overload taco stands for taco stands for transfusion associated circulatory overload it is called as taco now what happens is taco is often seen in those patients who are severely anemic and then you give them blood so it is seen in blood especially prbc prbc in severely anemic patients so what happens in a patient who is having severe anemia the, the whole entire body is compensated okay it is compensated with a less amount of blood the moment you give more prbc the heart actually starts failing the heart is not able to additionally handle the increased amount of blood volume so what happens as the blood volume increases as the blood volume increases the patient has starts having circulatory overload and they start presenting as almost as a heart failure almost like a heart failure okay it opens as a heart failure so patient was a known case of heart failure and has received two units of uh, whole blood of serum that exactly proves that it becomes a taco it becomes a case of taco only so if the question was patient was a known case of heart failure if the question was patient a known case of heart failure and he was given two units of whole blood whole blood along with severe anemia severe anemia this surely surely becomes a actual case of taco no doubt about it it surely becomes a case of taco there's no doubt about it okay it surely becomes a case of taco there's no doubt about it so now we should understand what are the features of a trolley versus a taco i'll talk about this deco how to differentiate a trolley with a taco i'll just talk about this in a separate slide how to differentiate a trolley versus a taco this is very confusing among students let me just put it down here see in blood pressure blood pressure the taco usually has a normal to high blood pressure trolley has normal to low blood pressure first difference the temperature of the body in trolley is often normal or high it is normal in taco okay the chest x-ray in both of them they show condition but taco shows more condition it shows more condition okay it shows more condition and can also show you a pleural effusion the chest x-ray in trolley is not initially very clear later on it can show you pulmonary edema but initially it doesn't show pulmonary edema it doesn't show pulmonary edema the pro bnp what is bnp brain natriuretic peptide see the name is natriuretic so it is trying to remove out the sodium when do you want to remove sodium you want to remove sodium when you see the body has more amount of blood or volume so you need to increase bnp only when the blood volume is increased and taco has high blood volume so the bnp should be higher it should be normal in this case it can also be low and this is less than 200 it should be more than 200 here in taco more than 200 here okay so there's a few things that you must be knowing to differentiate a trolley versus a taco a trolley versus a taco okay a trolley is seen in 0.1 percent cases a taco is often seen in 0.3 uh, to around 10 percent cases is what you see there now the basic problem of the taco is a volume overload this basically is what it's a volume overload okay and a trolley is the immune complex deposition remember it's an immune complex it's an immune complex deposition okay so criteria of the taco let me be very clear the criteria for the taco it must be acute respiratory distress should be high bnp high bnp along with the high cvp high cvp okay so high there should be respiratory distress respiratory distress should be there along with high bnp should be there and along with that he should have high cvp there are three things that you should be able to see in this case okay remember it should be hypertension in taco and hypotension in this case hypotension is not a feature of taco hypertension is a feature 
hypotension is a feature usually of the trolley hypertension is the feature of basically taco theek hai i think it was clear now yes in the taco it should be hypertension theek hai so if the question was on taco the bnp should be high there is no rule of such absolute neutrophil count the session should show you the condition yes rate again has no role then this fever doesn't is not there dyspnea is surely there and it is it is not hypotension it must be hypertension it must be hypertension okay so this was actually a question one more question and it is was asked the following marking is not correct the marking is not correct ठीक है, so I'm not sure whether I put the right uh, image or not, but I'm very sure my students will never fail me because those are my strength. So what is you saying is these actually are top blood cells. These are the basal cell with the nuclei. Okay, the below this this layer is the basal membrane, is the basal membrane, and these are the vessels there. They're the vessels there. Okay, the vessels there. So, so I don't I'm not sure exactly what was the wrong image, but if you can uh, appreciate, please let me know. what was the exact question to be uh, to what was answered asked there remember this is the goblet cell here the cilia here these are the basal cells with the nuclei this is the basal membrane and these are the capillaries here there's a capillaries here so if it is the correct image which i have actually asked so i don't know what was the exact question what was what, what they asking you what is this cell it is a goblet cell if this is asked it's a cilia if this is the is a basal cell if this is a question it's a basal membrane and this is the answer it is a capillaries Lamina propria is the same thing as basal membrane. Okay, lamina propria has is in the basal membrane. The following cells are involved in the respiratory distress syndrome. So, electron microscopy of the of the image was was, was seen. I have not exactly got the right image microscopy, but yes, if it is true, it should be involvement of the type one pneumocytes. So, I believe that this question was actually a repeat of the last year question also, which actually was asking you something in the COVID related scenario. So remember in the respiratory distress syndrome, the type one is initially damaged. The type two is not damaged initially; it is damaged at the later stage. So I'm not sure what was the exact image, but yes, it should be the answer. So very thank you to all of you. Remember, uh, if you have any doubts, you are always free to ask me on a Telegram group, and always there for my students. And honestly speaking, the questions, even though now might be looking as a bit simple, but it was a very tricky question. the questions the options were jumbled up students really have got confusion out of the options and the answers but however if you want to revise in a quick way you know one of the very good way of revision is the last minute revision program lmrp is that a very good way of revision and uh, for those students who have not been able to read it in read the entire 90 so in a better way i would suggest you to go through lmrp and not to think a lot because 12th march is about just about to start and uh, very soon i'll be posting a video on how to proceed from here further and to uh, ensure that you have the good amount of time left for revision also and you can de dedicate the revision time for maximum output topics theek okay? hai we'll talk talk about talk about a, a schedule of revision for the next 3 months how can you put it but that would be coming in a few days uh, guys thanks a lot guys uh, for staying with me uh, i wish you all the best a uh, one like for all of you i have already liked this video if you are actually if you have actually attempted um, seen my uh, i have been doing this for the last two years now and uh, trying to put up the questions on the same day of the exam so that you get the maximum benefit it's not me who gets the benefit you get the benefit so fun one like for those who actually like this video and uh, let me know if any of the question was wrongly recalled or there was some any error i will put post this entire uh, pdf in my telegram group just now so that you can also put up your comments there of okay so my telegram group is called as dr praveen pathology discussion group um, many of you are the members already there so i just put up this pdf there and so that you can look at this answers and put your comments there thank you guys for staying with me wishing you all the best for the upcoming exams and i can assure you one thing please let me know what else you want for revision i'm surely be putting up for you trying to revise the topics with you and you just do your work which is hard work don't relax because of the nicet don't get demotivated because of nicet please ensure that your goal of reaching 12th march of need is established 
with the maximum revision that you can do for revision ensure that you look at the weak points which you were not able to answer it might be time time management it might be revision schedule whatever it is let me know and i can mainly maybe i can help you in a better way so thanks guys stay blessed stay happy and watch the world cup now let's watch a world cup today we can have that time today let's watch i, I don't know what is the score can I, let any of you tell me the score what is the score now <clears throat> Okay, so thank you guys. Stay blessed, stay happy. I'll share this PDF right now in my Telegram group. Please join it from there and you can share this from there also. Goodbye. God bless you all. Thank you.